G'day friends and welcome back once more to Aussie Moto and Outdoors. Thanks so much for joining me. Look, no messing around, let's jump straight into it. Here's five bikes that are not as good as my Yamaha YZFR3. Now this list will be 50% subjective based on my own taste and preferences. However, it should still give new riders and shoppers an idea of the considerations at least that I had when choosing and buying my bike. Now these comparisons will be for a direct competitor. For example, I'm not comparing a 321 Yami to the Aprilia Tuono 660 or Ninja 650, simply because they're both Lambs bikes. Let's keep to similar spec bikes at similar prices. Now for anybody who's not Australian who's wondering what LAMS means, that is just Learner Approved Motorcycle Scheme. It's just bikes, I think in Europe you have like an A2 classification, I don't know what you have in the States. But in Australia we have LAMS bikes and that means you beginner bikes. And today's video is set against a ride I did this afternoon out to Dimbula and back, about 150 k's. Blue skies on the way out, black stormy clouds on the way back. Now if you disagree or simply have a different point of view, leave a comment and we can either fight to the death or discuss it like civilized humans. I'm easy either way. Now one quick caveat before we begin. I'm referring to new bikes. If you shop around you can get deals on used bikes that blow these differences out of the water. This is for the new bike buyers only. So to start the list off I'm going to say the first bike that isn't as good as the Yamaha R3 is every naked or street bike in the low CC or beginner lambs category. Now I know naked bikes are comfy and great value and well specced and everything else, I just don't think a naked bike looks as good as a fully fared bike, my opinion. So it was easy for me to eliminate anything that wasn't fully fared. Having said that, let's get to the next bike. So the next bike to be outdone by the R3 is the obvious and direct competitor, the Kawasaki Ninja 400. Now straight off the bat, it costs more than the R3 by about $700. So that's going to eliminate it right away for some buyers as plenty of people buy on price alone. Secondly, the colour options just aren't as good. Here in Australia there's only two options in the 2023 lineup, and that's the classic lime green and the ebony which is actually white and I think it's actually a really cool color and if I were to buy a Ninja it'd be the Ebony. However I just felt it hard to beat the classic Yamaha Icon Blue. Now the Ninja's got a lot of other things going for it. It is a slightly bigger engine so it's slightly more powerful. It does seem to have better brakes by all accounts. Uh, the suspension not so much. I think the Yamaha comes up trumps in the suspension. If you go look there's heaps of comparison videos on YouTube that take it in a lot closer detail than what I'm saying. But I'm just going to go with the fact the Yamaha looks a little bit better. It's a little bit cheaper. Yamaha wins for me. Okay, so the next bike that's not as good as the Yamaha R3 is the Honda CBR500R. Now this is a bloody big call and I know it because the Honda is bloody gorgeous. Like the Quacker, it's a few grand more expensive than the R3. Now the R3 weighs in almost 30 kilos lighter than the Honda, which makes a big difference to a new rider. The payload capacity of both bikes is actually quite similar, meaning the lighter Yamaha can be loaded up with more gear for touring, depending on the weight of the rider of course, which for me is quite light. Now I have the intention to go touring, so my beginner bike needed to be able to carry at least a weekend's worth of gear, which the R3 absolutely does. Now the Honda does that as well, but it is a slightly heavier bike, so I can carry a bit more stuff with my light weight on my light bike, and it cost me a few grand less. So for me, it's the Yamaha, however the Honda does look better. Alright, let's take a look at Suzuki's Australian lineup for beginner lambs approved bikes. Well that made my decision very easy. There's no fully fared Suzuki's available to beginners in the Australian market. Shame on you Suzuki, shame. The manufacturer of two of the most amazing, famous and gorgeous super sport bikes of all time, the Hayabusa and the Jixa, and you're giving nothing in a sport styling to your Australian buyers. Disappointing. But like I said, this made my decision much easier in this regard, Yamaha all the way. Okay, so the next bike I didn't choose over the Yamaha R3 is the CF Moto 300 SR. And I gotta say, it was tough to overlook this. They're cheap, the reviews online are all pretty bloody good, they look fantastic, and the specs and stats all indicate a bloody little ripper of a motorcycle. For me, however, the decision on this was aesthetic. I just believe that making a low CC beginner's bike in the Lambs market look like some track ready demon is just a tiny little bit corny. I know these bikes are very capable, but any grown-ups on big boy bikes are just going to say that's cute, which they're probably going to say about this entire list anyway, but that's my reason I'm sticking to it. Yamaha wins once more. 
Okay, can we check out the Triumphs? Triumphs have some gorgeous bikes. Well, we can, but unfortunately, like the Suzuki offerings, there are no Lambs bikes in a Sport or Super Sport styling from Triumph available in Australia this year. Again, a real shame. Come on, Triumph. Come on, Suzuki. Give us more cool bikes. Okay, next is the KTM RC390 and Wowzers. This thing is a bloody beast. It looks incredible. The specs are off the chart. It's reliable, gorgeous, mean, sporty, and has a decent price tag. Unfortunately for me, it kind of lumped it in the same category as a CF Moto, as I think if you're going for a full track ready looking beast, then perhaps you should wait until you have an unrestricted license and buy something a little bigger, a little better, that's going to be more of an end game bike for you. For me, I like the simplicity and plainness of the R3 compared to the KTM. Plus, once I've got my unrestricted license, then I'm free to look at bikes that are a little more beasty. Now, one more quick comparison I'm going to make, and that's the Ergos. I figured I'd leave the Ergos to last and cover it for all bikes in one hit. Now, the Yamaha was by far the most comfortable. Bear in mind, I'm 6 foot 1, I weigh 70 kilos, or about 155 pounds. I have quite long arms for my height. Now, my stats and that of the R3 almost perfectly match, giving me genuine comfort, and I've now done almost 4,000 Ks in two months on this bike, so I believe I'm in a pretty good position to give an accurate and honest opinion on the Ergos and the comfort. Now, maybe I I have conformed to the bike and I would have ended up comfy on almost anything but I like to think I simply chose the right bike and got lucky. So which bike are you going to buy or which bike did you buy? Leave a comment let me know this kind of discussion really helps potential buyers make their decisions. Thanks so much for watching now put your phone down and get outside.